This is a new science, socio-cyberneering. And this is his inventor, the extraordinary Jacques Fresco. He's my guest this weekend on News Weekend. My guest is an extraordinary Miamian, Dr. Jacques Fresco. Uh, I could go through all the things that Dr. Fresco has done. He's a social engineer, industrial engineer, designer, inventor, uh, consultant, was a consultant for Rotocraft Helicopter, director of scientific research laboratories, Los Angeles, designed and copyrighted various items, ranging from drafting instruments to x-ray units, uh, has had works published in the Architectural Record, Popular Mechanics, Saturday Review, uh, and has been a technical and psychological consultant to the motion picture industry member of the Air Force Design Development Unit at Wright Field, uh, developed the electrostatic anti-icing systems, uh, designed prefabricated aluminum houses. What, what is the senior driver's license? <laughs> what is the occupation? Industrial designer. Jacques, you... Uh, Social engineer. Does it bug you that... Uh, People, when they talk about Jacques Fresco in Miami, say that he's someone who's too far ahead of his time. His thinking is, we're not ready for advanced kind of thinking of no, I mean, that type. There's a bug I, you. I imagine every creative person in every field encounters that sort of problem. No, it doesn't. I can't afford it. There's too many things that are important. What is, is socio-cyberneering? Socio-cyberneering uh, is a new organization and it represents the application of the most sophisticated forms of science and technology toward problem solving so that we can reclaim the environment which we loused up over the years and to build a way of life worthy of man to humanize society, to break away from the artificiality, the regimentation that dominates our society today. Our society seems torn apart and pulled in many directions, socio-cyberneering is an approach at the restructuring of society in humanistic terms. Humanistic terms, yes. yes. Uh, the times I've spoken to you, you're very science and technological oriented. You want uh, categories and people, I remember, classified in categories and certain people living here and so I never wanted that. No. Let's say that we, we didn't read each other or I did not communicate the ideas. Uh, in essence, to me, all of the marvels of science and technology, all of the electronics and mechanical wonders, are just so many millions of tons of junk, unless it enhances the lives of men. The reason we emphasize machines and technology is to free men to go to art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and to find the meaning of their own existence and lives. How much can machines do? Can they we run feel, the things that are necessary to run? Well, Mr. King, if we can launch a rocket off the Earth while it's turning, find a place on the moon, land it automatically, pick up samples of the soil, bring the ship back without humans, I think the Russians have done this, bring the ship back to the Earth, surely we can handle airliners or anything else with redundancy. The problem, though, is a political structure is how do you start changing a society this much which has really no political system? No, it has no political system. It is not affiliated with any political party. It is neither communist, fascist, nor socialist, nor democratic. socio cyberneering is a sort of a quantum jump, a, a severe departure in man's way of thinking. How do you make a severe departure with millions of people? With millions of people, well, I think you pretty much understand that most of the development we have in our society today, the technology, the airplane, TV, radio, uh, modern production technology, is really done by very few people. I would say several hundred people comprise the modern technological civilization. But you don't need pe millions of technicians and millions of scientists. How many people that you know of today sit in their home and play their phonograph and radio and TV have any idea of how this works? No, it's just happening around them. I don't and, have any idea. And they're falling behind. What is happening to man is that his technological society the newer value systems that dominate our times that are pressing onward are just leaving behind hundreds of thousands of people that cannot make the transition. In other words, people that can't change can be found in the Amazon jungle today, the headhunters. Yeah. And we've got to change. I think the book Future Shock, or the book I worked on looking forward, Future Shock points out that there are a lot of things going to happen, whether you like it or not, that the future cannot be stopped by anyone. It is a continuous 
progression. But there are always going to be large groups of people going to have trouble handling it. Yes, change. This is true. Look at the change of someone. We agree. Sixty years old has seen unbelievable change. In I believe life. they can change quickly, if the information is made available to them. In other words, to present socio cyberneering in one shot is extremely difficult. I believe that people should not be divided. Uh, the the youngsters, the adolescents, and finally the the mature young adults, and then the older folks are all divided people. When you get to be 65, you don't want to travel on an ocean liner with old folks. How come we put up these buildings for the old folks? We think that people ought to live wherever the hell they want to live. That cities must be designed so we have an integrated, intelligent society. Uh, Einstein, when he was 65, 70 years old, he would talk to youngsters. He kept reading. He kept up with ideas. Why must societies be divided into different groups? We think that you're as young as you as your life permits you to be, as your exposure, as your ideas. All right, let's, uh, with uh, pictures, explore the thinking of Jacques Fresco and the society he'd like to see, socio-cyberneering. Now, we'll start with this, and you tell me... I'll try what, to point it out. Yeah, you can point right at it. All of the new cities will be a university, in essence. The center of the city, the nucleus, will house an electronic computer which only controls the weather, water purification, the atmospheric conditions, that is, it controls air contamination systems. The computers do not, I say it again, do not control people. They maintain safety, they oversee the environment, maintain ecological balance between animal life and plant life. All the machines do is control the physical entities that comprise the environment. The center of the city is a university. A university that covers all subjects related to man. It is not a commercial university. It is not based on any, there's no courses that are used to exploit or abuse any other human being. All business courses will be phased out. All repetitious jobs will be phased out. We feel that machines ought to do the filthy or the repetitious or the boring jobs. That man has to be free to pursue the higher things, the higher possibilities of man. In other words, if this is the medical unit, this little branch, and if you work in this center, you may live in the garden cities that surround the center. You don't have to, you can if you will. Each of the garden cities contain lakes, recreation areas, and between cities, we let everything go back to, to nature. Will computers be able to control the weather? Uh, this is a hmm. relatively easy project. Command. Easy to control? Yes. You could control the weather? I can go into that with you in a little while. All right. Uh, can I finish that? Well, okay. Sorry, On please. the outer rim of the city, we have the agricultural belt. All of your garbage is compressed and pumped, recycled out to the agricultural belt. There are no garbage trucks. There are no dump fields. We use everything. All waste is recycled. This is an ecological program. All right. Now, the, this is what the total city... The total city looks like this. There's circular conveyor belts that take you anywhere in the city in three minutes. The city population in this particular city is 15,000. We have larger cities designed, up to two million. The cities are all immersed in beautiful gardens. There are no trees in a row. It is not a mechanical environment. It is essentially a city immersed in the second Garden of Eden, where there are lakes, recreation areas, art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and surrounding the city, we have the agricultural belt where we grow foods hydroponically. Between cities, we let everything go back to nature. The deer, the coyote, the entire uh, ecological balance is maintained. We grow foods how? Hydroponically. What's that? Soilless agriculture in some instances, and in other instances, we use conventional agriculture, which we'll get down to in the drawings as mm. we go through the subject. All right. What, uh, before we get to the other pictures, what jobs uh, that we now know will not be present in this concept. Uh, like most, garbage men gone, right? Yes. All repetition. All mail people working in fact. Mail. No mailmen, no waitresses, no waiters, no cooks. Uh, there'll when be no jobs. When you go out to eat, how will you get your food? Well, there are beautifully <coughs> designed uh, uh, areas for eating in which you have all kinds of food. Japanese, French food, organic food, and the standards if you like it. And how would it get to you? The way the food gets to you. What we do is monitor the behavior of the cook. That is, we do a multi-channel tape on the best cooks that we know of. You're and as they prepare cat, their right. food, 
As they prepare their food, we tape every move they make and how they handle the food and how they dice the carrots the way you like it. Then you dial 2736 and you get the kind of food you want, Chef Milani style or individualized. This you can happen, even tape folks. your own cooking. I remember five years ago I used to laugh at you, and now all this is very believable. Uh -huh. All right, onward. What do we have here? Areas like India, where you have high population densities, or areas like China, we just can't afford to go on and make an individual house for every human being. We just don't have that kind of energy. Our population has already surpassed the point of no return. We have to unify our architecture, not that I like it, but we're trapped. We have to unify it and then make art centers, music centers, and gardens between the cities. In India, this would only extend six miles, and then you'd have countryside, lakes, and hiking area for most people. But if you try to spread your cities out, as we're doing, you're going to louse up the entire area. Are you betting that people will not declare war on each other? So that you, you can get at building all of this? Well, we don't have much choice. We're going to destroy each other, or we're going to make it. Now, this looks like some sort of submerged stadium with something flying In an away. area like uh, Panacam Park, we might build circular cities in the sea, where the water's about 30, 35 feet deep. Most of the apartment houses will open out into the sea. You can observe marine life and fish swimming by. There'll be no zoos, no sequariums. Everything will be observed in natural conditions. There will be boating, scuba diving, recreation, and universities built in the sea. socio cybernearing encompasses the entire social spectrum. Uh, these drawings are all made by you? Yes. And this might represent an individual house. Most of the homes will be individually contoured. If you're an artist, you'll live in the kind of house that is most suitable to your areas of interest. If you're a technician, a musician, the house will be designed for your needs. Most of the houses will be self-generative. That is, the, the heat of the sun falls upon your roof and lowers the temperature on the inside of the house. The sunlight is scattered on the inner walls in which you have a phosphor coating and the room glows all evening with a soft glow without any electricity, without any power waste. All of the pavement in the area is black. Under the pavement are heating coils, that is, built-in PVC tubing or wiring or conveyor tubing for water. As the sun beats down on a pavement, we get all the hot water we need without burning any fuel, conserving energy all over the world at a much lower cost. Who's, who's, uh, who's going to pay for all this? Where's the money coming from? If you took all of the gold and all of the wealth of this country, all of the certificates of debt and all of the land ownership, all of the diamonds and rings, and dumped it off the coast of Japan, as long as you didn't touch the American way of thinking, our technology, and our resources, we would not be impoverished, impoverished at all. America's wealth is not its gold, is not its banking institutions. These are false institutions that the entire money-structured and materialistic-oriented society is a false society. Ten or fifteen years from now, our society will go down in history as the lowest development in man. We have the brains, the know-how, the technology, and the feasibility to build an entirely new civilization. You believe that uh, we, we teach competition that it's not bred into some... And competition is dangerous, socially offensive, considered right and normal, because you are brought up to that value system. What kind of competition did Jesus have? What kind of competition is there in your body? Suppose your brain said, I'm the most important organ, and the liver said, I am, and I want to go a free enterprise system. You'd rot away in a month if every organ of your body went out for itself. What's this? Some individuals will live in homes of a different design. There will be a, a wide range of what you call individuality. The city is built to bring out what you call individuality, creativity, thinking, development, to question all things and challenge all ideas. The city is not utopian. It is an open city to develop all ideas, to change our concepts when they need to be changed. And we have a three-phase picture. Architecture will run the gamut, that all the buildings will be earthquake-proof, fire-proof, termite-proof, and shock-resistant, in that they will rest on this particularly designed sand bay so that no direct shock can be transferred to the architecture. There are no fire departments because nothing in the architecture can burn. There are no television sets, radios, tape recorders, or record players. All of that is done by the central computer system in which all of the world's music is housed in a central computer. 
You don't want records, tape recorders, all this junk that requires continuous maintenance. All you want is the music you like. You dial it and you get the music. You don't need to pick up records or store them. You live in an insane culture where we duplicate things. It's like having a television station in every home or every apartment building. All you want is the music or the program. You dial that, there's where the computers come in. They don't control you, they provide you with the but music. But you wouldn't need a set program. in the house to get the program. No, all you need <coughs> is an image screen. An image screen. An image screen, a flat screen built in on the wall. You don't have a set sticking out. You don't have tape recorders. All you have is the music you like. This, uh, did you read Ira Levin's This Perfect Day? No, I did not. Well, he had a society like this in which the computers also control the human beings. Well, this See, is like, I'm against. And Very uh, he much made it so that you felt a little ill, you pressed the button, and I you got I don't like it. that. That's too much like 1984. All of yours is using. Brave New World. Yeah. This is humanistic. All our cities will be separated by a half mile of landscape areas and return to the natural ecological balance. The lakes, the hills, the valleys, the animal life between cities will go back to nature. How will we travel? Cities are connected from core to core by either cyclic elevators or linear transportation systems. There are no freeways and no automobiles, therefore no automobile accidents. No automobile accidents because they don't exist. We have continuous transportation. You don't need to wait for a bus. We have continuous moving conveyors. Now, who, well, when I get back to money, and you said it is unimportant, it, to start this, who will build it? To start who gonna, this, who's going to build the first? It's, it's a membership organization. And the membership organization is like, the members pay about $10 a year, and they get the booklet and the information, they go to meetings. But the funds actually come from donations from organizations and various agencies of the federal government and private foundations to build the first city to solve the transportation systems, to work out a totally different environment. And after the first city is built, we expect a rapid growth in the membership. It is difficult for people to immediately understand socio-cyberneering because it is not like anything else that you're familiar with. Obviously, it requires a, a change of thinking. But you're not dull, Jacques, okay. For example, agriculture. You read of pests, you read of insecticide, you read of DDT, you read of constant spraying, contaminating the earth. People get angry. They join environmentalist groups. They try to save our environment, but they come up with no specific ideas. socio cyberneering has a blueprint for all of the identified problems. For example, all our agriculture will be totally enclosed, either in plastic or glass buildings that can transmit ultraviolet light. Therefore, you have no insect invasion of plants. We also have special ultrasonic generators that keep all insects away from plants. If certain insects, particularly selected insects at a detriment <coughs> to the plants, are hit with ultrasonic, cavitation is produced and their bodies rupture, fall to, the, fall to the soil and enrich the soil and are not washed into our rivers and do not contaminate. Therefore, in agriculture that's enclosed, you're not subject to frost, you're not subject to freeze or weather, in other words, these nuclear plants out here that dump their hot water into the bay, we use that hot water in the winter to enhance the plant life, to grow bananas in Georgia, in North Carolina, by using the hot water from nuclear plants. What do we do with the radioactive waste? We encase it in piping and treat sewage water with the radiation, not radioactive power, powder, but the radiation material is sealed. And through a multiplicity of shields, we only use the radiation to clean the waters emitted by hospitals and all other sources of contamination. Well, you, uh, you keep showing this figure, this thing flying around in the sky, so you better tell me what that is. Oh, this is one of the methods of conserving our land area. You read of erosion. Our beaches are being eroded. Land is being eroded. By designing and building underwater dams, which is entirely feasible within our time, we can modify the ocean current. We can modify the Japanese stream. We can build dams under the ocean and utilize the Japanese current. Oxygenate the water and do away with the red tide. The red tide, by the way, can be dealt with by oxygenation, by recirculating the water, by building dams under the water in the Gulf Stream to set up greater turbulence in the water. And this is feasible if we don't do it we will cease to be as a nation. We have the energy, the know-how, the raw materials. socio cyberneering is an organization that is probably the boldest organization ever conceived of. What? And we're undertaking the most ambitious project 
in the history of mankind. What's this? This represents a surveillance equipment aircraft to survey the areas and movement of the currents and uh, to monitor Earth systems. All right, Jacques. This represents a variation of a circular scheme. Most of the cities are based on natural configurations, the atomic structure, basic designs in nature. The center of the city might be related to studies of the human organism. This center here may be studies of diseases of the eye, other systems, diseases of the nervous system, an all-out research project on enhancing the lives of men. There are no military programs or projects in socio-cybernearing. There's no need for an army? No need for an army. Now, what if one people decides to attack another people? We then invite, after the first city is built, we tend to go socio cybernearing International to invite the participation of all nations of the world into a system of monitoring the Earth and using the Earth to enhance the lives of men. What about the, what if, what if, what if one group of people get together and attack another group of people? We believe that is done due to scarcity or that a society suffers from economic deprivation, lack of arable land area, or overpopulation. No, you believe it would not occur? It if... would not occur. What is this wild looking thing? This is clean sources of power. By utilizing the natural heat of the earth, that is volcanic energy, or the magma, or the molten lava under the earth, of which there are approximately 500 potentials. If we tap a, m a mountain in Hawaii called Mount Aloha, we can get enough power to electrify the world. We can get enough power from that volcano alone. We have 500 potential volcanoes we can harness. We can use that natural heat from the volcano. No smog, no smoke, no dirt, no gases, no fuels, no oil spills, and no more burning of fuels in any city to generate power. If Japan used Fujiyama, they don't need to burn oil. They don't need oil. All of that heat is sitting there. 20 million years of power right under the Earth's surface. In fact, you don't even need to use fusion power or nuclear power. And it's easy to tap, and it's clean and available. And as soon as we make up our minds to put scientists, rather than on weapons, nerve gas, on harnessing the Earth power that is already here. Well, how are you going to get the president of Florida Power and Light or Shell Oil to uh, give uh, us that? Socio cyberneering does not appeal to governments, to private enterprise. We're going to do this thing just as the automobile phased out the stagecoach, just as television stepped in and phased out the old vaudeville and the old motion pictures, that history and technology is respecters of no society, no individual opinions, but it moves on. And we've got to be prepared to face the future. socio cybernearing will tackle some of the most ambitious projects in the history of man. This represents the building of underwater dams within the Gulf Stream. This dam will collect, direct, and route the waters of the sea into a spillway that is centrifugally shaped so that fish and marine life are separated from the turbine blades. The Gulf Stream will generate power to oxygenate the waters, to eliminate the red tide, to, to pick up the amount of fish in the ocean, to monitor marine life, and build an eco ecological relationship between the total oceanographic world and the continents. Mm -hmm. Areas where we've gone in for strip mining and loused up the land by digging out the areas, shamefully pitting the, the surface of the United States, we feel we can build underground art cities, music centers, landscaped areas with gardens and lakes, and reclaim those areas. Now this looks like a train station. After or... the automobile is phased out, which we hope to do very rapidly, we hope to build a new transportation system and also phase out all forms of aircraft except surveillance. Aircraft you you helicopters. Have, we think aircraft are no longer necessary. In fact, the skies are so jammed and landing is so difficult and the speeds and the shockwave are no longer worth working on. I know the people in the aircraft business do not understand this, nor do they feel this, because they feel that all institutions tend to perpetuate themselves. We hope to phase out the airplane by desi designing transportation units that can move up to 2,000 miles an hour floating on a, a magnetic repulsive field or an air cushion. And in those huge trains of tomorrow, 
There'll be television, radio, amusement, art centers, classrooms, not a group of seats lined up as your trains are today, highly regimented society, whether you know it or not. This society will be different in its transportation means. If 40 or 50 people have to leave the train, we slow up to 100 miles an hour, lift off the passenger section, or slide it off and slide on a section with the passengers getting on. You don't have to stop the whole plane or the train. Today, when three people are getting off, you land the airplane and three or four people get off. In the future, we will just shove off those passengers getting <laughs> off and that freight leaving. Uh, uh, how will this go from, say, Miami to London? Uh, we, we then have an underwater project in which tunnels are suspended 125 feet beneath the surface of the sea. Therefore, you eliminate most of the ocean-going transportation system. You're not subject to the weather or anything else. This is part of the linear acceleration train that can take you anywhere in the world in just a few hours, safely, without snow, rain, being lost at sea, are all subject these to things the weather. Are all these things you're saying, Jacques, uh, could they be built with what we know today, or are some of these things, are you guessing based on what we know today? No. All of these things can be built with what we know today. It would take 10 years to change the surface of the earth, to rebuild the world into a second Garden of Eden. The choice lies with you. The stupidity of a nuclear arms race, the development of weapons, trying to solve your po problems politically by electing this political party or that political party, that all politics is immersed in corruption. Let me say it again. Communism, socialism, fascism, the Democrats, the liberals, we want to absorb human beings, women's lib, all organizations that believe in a better life for man, there are no Negro problems or Polish problems or Jewish problems or Greek problems or women's problems. They're human problems. To come into socio-cybernearing and take your part and function, we are not concerned with the divisions of segments of society. No uh, control of population? Population control is dependent upon education. We feel an educated population needs no control. You wouldn't stop sex? No, sir. Right. Good right. move, Jacques. What's this? Some individuals may want to live in a way out house. How far way out, how far out you want to live, would be determined by your value system and your lifestyle. It is not a restricted society. It is not a 1984. It is not a brave new world, but it's something brand new. We would like you to investigate socio cyberneering now, I'm going to give you the address out of people who'd like to know more about it. Ooh, the next one looks really weird. Some people may want to live in a different kind of home. I myself, I'm interested in world affairs, ecological changes. Therefore, the walls would have panoramic screens giving me the kind of information that I am interested in. Your home may be different, designed to fit your needs. The homes will now, be molded. No one will rapidly. pay the builder of the home. He no. will not receive money. No. Why will he build the home? What he is doesn't insane. build a home. The homes are built through systems engineering in which we can form a home every half hour by blowing the floor up out of the ground so that we have out, up out of the plastic unit which the floor is comprised of. We blow and shape the furniture and then spray the furniture. In other words, if you're going to be here, if the United States is going to be here for the next 20 years, you can't have a plumber install the toilet bowl and the sink and the shower in the same old hand tool fashion that was done 40 years ago. We've got to make a quantum jump, mold maybe 15 different types of bathrooms. You pick out that which you like, the bathroom is self-cleaning, self-drying, and we install it in your architecture based upon your selection. What, uh, uh, it will be so hard to change, you know, How a lot of these things sound fascinating, but you, to, in order to accomplish any of this, you, you require, to me, a change of the human. The human value system. Yeah. We feel that if enough human beings are exposed to socio cyberneering through information, and they question things about human behavior, the new schools, I'd be happy to describe all things. We don't have enough time now to go into that. But it doesn't take very long for Americans to change. Americans have been conditioned in, a, in their kind of society to get a different kind of car next year, to buy a new television set or a tape recorder. We are radical as hell, but our political and social institutions have not changed. And this is where we are stagnating, because we always equate, equate any new idea with communism or regimentation because we've been brought up to fear that which is new. And I think that Christ was a radical. He brought new ideas, but it took time, thousands of years for people to really appreciate ideas. They still haven't bought them. Exactly. Uh, what's, Our what's, ideas, this giant, what's this giant foot? 
what looks like a giant foot is really a wind tunnel in a vertical position. We feel by building six of these in the Los Angeles area and the New York area and accelerating air down through this tunnel by means of turbines and electrostatic filters and a low temperature base, we can clean the air of the solids, particulate matter, gases, and all suspended particles within a period of one year, clean the air in the Los Angeles and New York area, and then remove these structures and build garden cities again. Let's not wait for nature to do it. We loused it up. We're going to have to clean it up like the war program. You know, people, uh, before I show this lesson, people, uh, just so you know, you know, that uh, a lot of this is wondrous to you, and it is to me, of course, but uh, Dr. Fresco is a respected social engineer, industrial designer, designer and inventor, PhD in human factors engineering, and has worked on many things from uh, handy icing systems to prefabricated aluminum houses, designed systems for noiseless and pollution-free aircraft, wrote the book Looking Forward. He has lectured uh, at the Department of Sociology in Princeton on Sociology of the Future, guest at the College Editors Environmental Conference in Washington, lectured at Queens College, New York, University of South Florida, University of California, designed various items ranging from drafting instruments to x-ray units. And uh, so, you know, don't just dismiss this. If he says it's possible, it's possible. What's this? Well, in times to come, most of you are probably familiar with the giant units that he used to move the rockets onto their launching platform, tremendous tractor systems. In the distant future, perhaps the next 15 or 20 years, huge tractors may be built with a nuclear reactor built in that can fuse the Earth into canals and transportation ways. We can shape the Earth by nuclear energy without mixing concrete, without having trucks and human beings leveling the concrete. We can do this today at 20 miles an hour if we wanted to. Shape the Earth into highways, waterways, flood control systems in a totally different reorganized technology. All right, now, Technicians working now in the, this present setup in the private industry concept. Why haven't we seen more things like this? If, if they are feasible, if for just, the, for example, the Japanese, oh, everybody's working on a high-speed train. And uh, you can't tell me that uh, the Japanese wouldn't like to have, uh, the Seaboard Railroad wouldn't like to have a train that could get to you to New York in 20 minutes, well, for, well, even for profit. Why I don't say they? There, as far as I know, at present, there is really no integrated transportation system. Integrating a transportation system, you have to design, it's just like designing a heart of a human being, if God did it this way, and then he decided to put some lungs nearby, and then he built another structure to hold our arms. All of these are afterthoughts. What we have to do is design a city as a living system, as an organism, as a university, that all of the cities of the future will be university cities that grow, that continue to exchange ideas. The city will have a built-in transportation system, so there are no accidents, and no unthought out areas of technology. Medicine, botany, agriculture, the total system. One planning system. Our cities have been designed a long time ago. The area like Miami, downtown Miami, they put in a couple of pots and a couple of trees and this kind of simulating a, an intelligent approach to an environment which costs thousands of dollars. And these little intrusions on Flagler Street only cause the buses and the fire engines and the emergency vehicles to become further tied up. There are no solutions. There are clumsy, academic approaches by people immersed in this kind of society coming up with their cop-out solutions that have no relationship to the problems. You cannot be a conventional architect, a conventional engineer, work for the telephone company or any other of the old establishment and come up with an idea that is a radical innovation. The space program takes new thinking to save our country, to save our land, to save our environment, to save our youth, our stupidity, our conflict, we've got to reorganize our way of thinking and reconsider our social aims what toward uh, the brotherhood of man. We do that or we perish. What do you think Frank Lloyd Wright would have thought of this? I think that Frank Lloyd Wright was establishment. I think that his architecture was radical, but I think it was radical in a limited way. And we've got to get away from this limited, I did this and I did that, and the self-centeredness that dominates our society today. It must be a privilege to serve members of society. Not that we want rewards or medals or honor for what we do, because it is just an honor to do it. And if you cannot work for that, then you miss the boat. You don't understand the teachings of the wisest men that ever lived. 
In your society, there are no mayors of cities. There, there are, are no mayors, there are no politicians, and you don't have to fill out any forms to go to the art center or music center, and you go to a university whether you can afford it or not. If you want a suit of clothes, how do you get it? Well, most suits of clothing are designed by anatomists and physiologists to be comfortable. Most of your so shoes will breathe as you walk. They will be very different than the shoes that dominate your society today. Most of your clothing will be organically designed in that as you move your arms, it'll aerate and breathe. And most of your clothing will be washed by ultrasonics. No detergents, no washing machines, no centrifugal separators. We can knock all of the fluid off clothing today by vibration. We can knock fluids off clothing. In other words, if you could move a piece of fabric from position A to position B rapidly enough, the fluid will remain behind. Ultrasonically vibrating the fabric can remove the fluids. And you need not contaminate your waters. You don't have to use any of the system today. Let me briefly say this. You have a bumper in front of your car, behind your car. But your society, your car's hit on the side also. You have safety belts and harnesses in your car. But that assumes that you're going to hit, be hit by the rear or in front. If you're hit on a side, you go right through the side of the windshield. What good are these approaches? They are designed by men that are cerebral insufficient. You've got to design a society with a bumper all around the car, phase out human drivers, put electronic guidance systems in cars, or eliminate the automobile and design a holistic transportation system. We must put our mind to this as we do to put a man on the moon. We must put our mind to the social problem. We wish to get away from politics. We wish to get away from the old world method of solving problems. If you can barely understand what it is I'm trying to say in this short period of time, please investigate socio cybernetics. Are you saying that General Motors could build a safe car today, totally safe car, with the knowledge at hand? Yes, if they're given that assignment. They're not given that assignment. Well, because they're working on their own initiative to make more money. They're only interested in, in Look, if General Motors had to service their own cars, I can, I can tell you for certain that they would have two levers that you turn down and pull out the engine, shove it in a service unit, and you don't, to change a $3 spring in a car or a $2 part, you've got to do a $45 job on a small car just to pull the engine out. But if they had to service the car, I can assure you that whole engine would slide out. You know they put a race car wheel on with one turn? That's the way your wheels would go on. You'd have bumpers all around. You'd have no chromium, no ornament. The chromium would be in the engine where you have chrome steel, tougher engine. In other words, the automobile companies have total, actually they have contempt. Let me say this again. All manufacturers have contempt for you to sell you the toothpaste. The products that they sell you are deliberately, deliberately designed to wear out, break down, so you have to continually service those things. You notice that your telephone is pretty reliable? Well, we here in America can think. We can design things that don't wear out and don't break down and don't require maintenance at all. Yeah, the instrument, yes. the phone, that stays forever. You bet. If the automobile companies had to maintain their cars, it would be a forever oh, you mean the unit. the phone company has to maintain the phone. You bet. That's why it's good. That's why your units hold up. I never thought of that. I don't. Most so a phone never, I mean, you know, operators can be bad. Yeah. This is going to be bad, but the phone yeah. itself. That's the same for your TV sets, by the way. You mean if, if RCA, if everybody had to maintain their own... You bet. They'd all be... There ought to be automatic system which you pull out, shove in a replacement unit. If your engine breaks down, they pull out the engine, shove in a courtesy engine, and you take off. Why hold up the whole car when you need a battery job? If you did that in the Army Air Force, you couldn't <laughs> operate at all. Your society is really comprised of very stupid men. Let me say it again. All politicians, all lawyers, all businessmen will be phased out. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. It's not going to be a revolution. You don't need it. Our society cannot be maintained by this type of incompetency. It was great, the free enterprise system, about 35 years ago. That was the last of its usefulness. Now we've got to change our way of thinking or perish. Our system is dying. If Nixon remains in, it'll die in his lap. If a liberal group gets in, the society will fall. Our cities are going broke. We don't have the money nor the type of mentality required to save our society in politics or government. I am not your enemy. I am not trying to destroy things. I do not believe in revolution. I believe that ideas must be presented to American people. They have to make the decision. Now, uh, Dr. Fresco is in the local phone book, am I correct? Yes. Is that the number of people would yes. call the contact? It's F-R-E-S-C-O, uh, Dr. Jacques Fresco. And uh, we're gonna do some more with you, because you're you know what I'd like to do one day? Maybe we can do a special. Yeah. 
I want to do one on human behavior. No, human human behavior. How about a human behaviorist? And how about some engineers? You know, kind let's, of, what if I can get a guy from General Motors? Love right? An engineer of a car. Love it. Get me the biggest establishment people you can get hold of. I'd love them. Bankers, ecologists, economists. I can't use the kind of language I'd like to use on TV, but I'd like to talk to them. I'd like to blow it up for you to understand it. Like the money system now, the whole idea of devaluation. Nobody knows what it's all about. They all think it's very complicated. Actually, it's very simple. I'll tell you what it is if I have the time in a nutshell. What's going on? If an island like Haiti had about several hundred million dollars in assets, but they went on, they printed more money than they had things to back it up or gold, then that money has no value. If a little island, say like St. Croix, printed lots of money and just came to the United States to try to buy things, they ran their printing presses night and day, the money is not back. That's why it doesn't have anything. Your whole banking system is utterly corrupt. Your lending institutions have loused up the system, but there's nobody out there telling you what's wrong with it. So it looks okay to you. I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't work for anyone. No one can discharge me. I have no boss. The only thing that can happen to me is I can be put in prison. Well, there are many books to write. In other words, there are many things to be done. I am not afraid. I am afraid to live in the society we live in today. The direction we're moving in gives us 25 years for a total environmental destruction. We have seven years to mass starvation. We don't have much time. The value of a nation, dollar value, America's value, uh, the value of the dollar is not based on gold reserve. The value of the dollar is based on faith in this country, right? And you its output, isn't it? That's the truth. You can't build a nation on faith. It has to be backed up by resources. Well, I mean, but if the French respect no. the dollar, it's backed by respect for American resources. Respect, it only means that it serves France in some useful way. A nation's interest in any other nation is always self-interest. When we send representatives to any other country, our self-interest is first. Whatever happens to that nation is secondary. We have nothing but utter materialism which dominates our society today. You're talking about all countries? Yes, all countries. The science is socio-cyberneering. The uh, man behind it is Dr. Jacques Fresco. I'm Larry King.